In this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth walkthrough of the Monzo app. Before I start, I should say that I'm not going to go into massive depth as to everything that Monzo offers. This video is just going to be to show you the functionality of the app so that you can get a feel of what it looks like and how easy it is to use, right? So I'm just going to log into the app with my fingerprint. And the first screen that comes up here is the home screen. Now, as you can see here, there's a long list of transactions. And before I get too in depth into the app, what I should say is that I don't actually use Monzo as my main banking app. I mainly use Monzo for its pots and I put money aside each month into different pots, like you can see here at the top for car insurance, phone, and laptop. So there's not gonna be loads of varied transactions here. It's just gonna be mainly these three things that you can see. So if you go down this list, you can see sort of my transactions in and out for the last few months. That's pretty much your main aspect of the home screen. So if you scroll back to the top and if you pull down here, what you can see is your card, your last four digits and your expiry date. Now, if you want some more information, you can click here where it says account. And the first thing at the very top is learn about overdrafts. And again, this is not something I'm going to talk about in this video. This is what I'm going to talk about in my next video when I do a comparison of Starlink versus Monzo. And I'm going to talk about the different things that they offer. And in that video, I'm going to talk about different overdraft rates, et cetera, et cetera. So again, this video is just showing you how the app works. Below overdraft, we've got account details. You can see your sort code and your account number. And below that, we've got Monzo's address. So if you ever needed to get in contact with them, that's their address to write to them. And underneath that, you've got your BIC information. Now we've got account statements, statement history, you can jump into here and you can download any statement that you want. Now going back, we've got statement of fees. And again, this is where you can come into a nice place where you can download a summary of all the fees that you've been charged. Next, we've got interest rate statements. So this is very useful for people like me who are self-employed when doing a self-assessment. If you need to report how much interest you've earned on your savings or on your money, this is where you would come and do it. And as you can see, it's done it for the tax years. So you come in here and you can download them. Going back. New card. So if you were to ever lose your card and you need to get in touch with Monzo, this is where you do it. Fill this out and then they will send you a new card. Coming back into here, this is where it shows you your ATM allowances. Obviously, there are fees for if you go above these allowances. This is something I'm going to delve a bit more into in my Starling versus Monzo review. But this is where you can have a quick glance to see how much allowance you have remaining. Coming back here and this is where you've got you can set the limits for how much you can spend in a day and how much you can spend on contactless. Uh, this is where you have maximum control over your card and you can sort of set your own limits. Now coming back again. And just under that, we've got the block gambling transactions, which a lot of banks are offering this now. I don't even gamble, but for whatever reason, I don't know why I always turn this on. So if you want to block gambling, that's where you would do it. So now we come back to the main menu and next to our account tab, we've got pin and card number. So again, this is one of those things that when the fintechs first came in, this was a big feature that they had because in the past, if you sort of lost your pin, you would have to kind of go through that whole process of ringing up your bank and then they would have to you know, send you out a pin in the post, which could take a few days, which was a bit of a nightmare. So when the new, when the fintechs came in and they brought in this whole, you know, log into the app and you can see your pin straight away, this was obviously, this was a big feature that they, that they brought to the, to the game. And again, this was another big feature that the fintechs brought in was the freezing your card. You've heard of people in that situation where they think they lost their card. So they ring up the bank, cancel all their cards. 20 minutes later, what do they do? they find out that they've just left their card on the kitchen counter and now they've done that thing where they've canceled their, all their cards and they're now having to wait a couple of weeks or a week for a new card. That was always a bit of a nightmare scenario. So now if you were to lose your card, you could just freeze it. And then if you happen to then find your card, then all you have to do is you come into the app and you defrost it. Really simple and it's absolutely brilliant. Now doing one swipe to the right brings up these pots. So if you haven't watched my styling walkthrough, pots are basically just another area within your current account where you can specifically put money aside to save towards certain goals. In this case here, I'm saving towards car insurance. I basically put 20 pounds a month 
side every single month to save up for my car insurance so when it comes time for renewal next year I don't have to pay it monthly and pay that 20 to 25 percent APR I've got my money sitting here in a pot ready to go so what I do on the first of every month I send £20 to my Monzo account from my Barclays. Now, then that £20 on the third of the month will get transferred from my main Monzo account into my car insurance pot. You can see at the top that I've got a savings goal of £360. Right next to it, it gives you a nice little percentage that tells you how close you are to being at your goal. So at the moment, I'm at 28%, which is nice. I know that I'm on track based on when my insurance is due for renewal. Now, of course, if I wanted to go in, I could just manually add some money by clicking add and I could just take it from my main account and add it if I wanted to. When it comes to paying my insurance, what I do is I come to withdraw. I can choose how much I want to withdraw here. I can do £100 or say it was £230. Put £230 and then I can withdraw that and that will go back to my main Monzo pot. And then from my main Monzo account, I can send that to wherever it needs to go to pay that insurance. So if I come back here, so now I've got another one for a laptop. You can also click history and it shows you all the payments that you've made. So going back and we go across, saving up for a phone as well. Now, if you swipe all the way to the right, they've got a slight area of the app that I'm not as much of a fan of. And this is the things that you can do with Monzo. Bearing in mind, we've just swiped through my pots. You would you know, expect to create a pot option to be here, which is perfectly fine. But one thing I don't really like is that they've sort of bundled it in here with this earn interest on your money, which I'll click on it to show you what it is. This is an area where Monzo basically shows you some products that they offer from third parties. So in this case, this is a set easy access saver provided by Paragon. I've got absolutely no problem with Monzo offering these third party services. I believe they earn a small commission you know if you sign up to these services through them which I've got absolutely no problem with but I feel like I don't really know why they've put it in this area of the of the app I feel like this it really feels like the pots area so there was no need to bring these this little menu into it especially since you'll see in a minute that they've actually put it somewhere else as well when I give you a little summary of what I think about the app I'll sort of come back to this again they've put in this learn about overdrafts here when you know we've already seen it somewhere else so I don't know why they've put it here and again it shows you your, your allowances uh, you can have a look at loans and here they do have something that I find interesting but again I'm not sure why it's over here split a bill if you've ever been to a restaurant and then you need to sort of get the money back from different people then you can do a split a bill where it will send out a notification telling people how much they owe you and then they can pay back to you really easily so I actually do really like this feature so if I go back and swipe to the top so I pull that little menu down and swipe all the way back to the home screen. One thing I found odd about Monzo is one of the coolest things about the app is their sort of budgeting and spending anal analysis, which is really helpful. Yet they've kind of hidden it away into this little corner up here on this little pie chart when it's kind of one of the main things that people sort of know them for. So I don't know why they've hidden it away. I feel like it should be more front and center of the app. So up here, they click this little calendar. And this is something I do like. They show you how much you've spent, you know, a nice little summary each month. And you can scroll back if you want. But the aspect that I do really like, and it only seems like a small thing, but it's this attention to detail that I like. So you can see here it says start date on the first. But if I click change, for me personally, I like to look at my spending, you know, month to month. So 1st of January till 31st of January. But not everyone might want to do this and you can see here that it's defaulted to the first of the month but if someone wanted to you can choose custom and change it to whatever you want so small detail but I do really like that and in here if you click this little target at the top what you can do is you can actually set a budget for certain categories such as bills charity eating out entertainment I feel like this is probably a list that they're just going to you know carry on adding to as people give them more and more requests for different categories i did find that when i first started with starling they did have different categories but they didn't have that many and one day they did an update and one of the things that they updated was the amount of categories that you could actually choose from so you can see that they've already got a really long list here and they're probably going to add to this more and more as time goes on so you can set a limit for how much you want to say spend eating out say you want to spend 100 pounds so when you get close to reaching your budget then you can obviously look in here and it will tell you which i think is, is really good you know i think one of the main aspects of 
these apps is they wanted to help people manage their money a lot better. So I think that's a really great uh, feature that you've got there. I'll go back to the home menu. I'll just click up here. So in the top left, so the first thing you see here is upgrade account. So I'll click on that to show you. And this is where Monzo kind of wants to sell you their Monzo premium and their Monzo Plus services. This is going to be a separate video where I talk about whether I think it's worth upgrading to Monzo Plus, whether I think it's worth upgrading to Monzo Premium, or whether I don't think it's worth upgrading to either. So that is another video I'll be making very soon. You can see how much you have in your main Monzo account. Plus, you can see how much you've got in each of your pots in a bit of more of a neat summary sort of view. And what I also like is just above that, you can see how much you have in your entire Monzo account in total. Small detail, but I really like that because if they didn't show you that, you'd have to sort of add up how much you have within each pot. It could be a little bit messy. It's just nice that they put it in one round figure just so you know how much money you have across your entire Monzo account. So if we scroll down here, you can see that this menu where the create a pot, earn interest on your money, learn about overdraft section is what I was talking about earlier, where I think this is where this sort of belongs. I don't think it belongs in the area where they put your your pots for example installing your pots feel like they're in a lot more of a separate area of the app which i think that's how it should be it shouldn't be mixed into other menus and other aspects so i think this is where this learn about overdrafts and all those kind of things i think this is where it belongs i think this is a much more clean interface and this is where you can open a joint account and you can actually apply for a business account so scrolling back to the top, this is one thing I don't like about Monzo. It says I'm still in the home section, but to me, the home section is that first screen that I see when I first unlock the app. Yeah, it says I'm still in the home section. And even if I click home, nothing happens. To get back into the main home screen that we first saw when I opened the app, what you have to do is click current account. For me, it's a very small thing, but a small detail like that, it makes the app feel like it doesn't flow properly. The home button should be reserved for the first screen you see when you open the app. And then when I click in the top left like this, this should be its own little tab at the bottom, in my opinion. So I'll click back into there. And the last area we're going to go into is payments. So obviously this is just standard run of the mill stuff, paying someone, requesting a payment from someone. It shows you who you send the most money to and your most recent pays that you've set up. This is one of my favorite parts of the app. They show you this in a lovely clean interface, what scheduled payments you have going out. And the reason I really like this is although Barclays, their app is actually really good. And I feel like they've put a lot of effort into making the app better over time, especially as the fintechs have come in and they've really, you know, made the big banks step their game up. One aspect that Barclays is still terrible at is showing your standing orders and direct debits. That part of the app is still an absolute mess and it's horrible to use and look at. The way Monzo have done it here is really clean, really easy to understand. This is one of my favorite parts of the app. So what is my opinion as a long-term user? So the first thing I will say is I do like the Monzo app, but I feel like it does struggle with some of the same things that Starling does. That These guys are kind of, they were the new guys on the block. And because of the fact that they are a FinTech bank, I feel like sometimes they maybe try a little bit too hard with how they've designed the app and the menus and the functionalities. I feel like sometimes they don't feel as straightforward and as user-friendly as they could be. And that actually the apps could do with maybe a bit more simplification. I mean, I don't think they're very difficult to use. It's just, I don't know, maybe I feel like they're trying a little bit too hard. You know, sometimes, you know, duplicating the menus in, you know, two or sometimes even three different locations in the app. It's just sometimes a bit, not confusing for the user, but it's just a bit, it's a little bit odd. I'm sure they will get better over time. And as users give them their feedback, I feel like it's something that they will get better at. Just a few tweaks here and there. Uh, I think it could make it great. But anyway, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.